Hello, welcome to Hatton Games. Today we'll be breaking down a round between Very Games and Quantic on Inferno. So straight away at the start of the round, Kenny S throws a smoke at the top of middle to stop any CTs from peeking. This gives both Smiths in existence full mid control, allowing them to set up in their positions. Whilst this is happening, MBK and Kenny S are going through the app's entrance, while Screen boosts Hay to clear bedroom. They have Kenny S peak long haul with the AWP before all grouping up, waiting for the smokes and flashes over balcony. Once Existence is in position, Smiths throws a pot flash through the smoke on mid which you can clearly see blinds Frost on Arch, forcing him to pull back and play more defensive. This flash also blinds anyone quad so it's good either way. At the same time that pot flash goes off, Existence throws a key smoke that lands on truck, obstructing the view to balcony from anyone playing sight or mini pit. Whilst Existence is throwing this smoke, Smiths throws one to cover Arch. This gives Existence the space to throw two flashbangs over the balcony roof blinding both Semphis in pit and TCK on balcony. The second flashbang is timed so that it pops whilst MBK is already leading out of balcony. This way MBK already has his back towards the flash so he doesn't get blind and can still face the Quantic side. Once Very Games have gotten the entry, they sit with the AWP in pit and wait for anyone to peek from Arch. Scream scatters flashes onto Quad to stop anyone from pushing up past Boiler. Unfortunately Frost manages to walk up on Smiths in Boiler and take him out before they got the bomb down. But it's important to note the positioning of Smiths to maintain map control. Had the bomb gone down and he stayed alive, you can pretty much guarantee nobody will be coming through quad or apps, allowing everyone else to focus their attention on Arch. As soon as Smith dies, Scream uses his smoke to block off mini pit and plant the bomb. Kenny S takes this opportunity to scatter both his flashes onto quad and helps Existence to pick up a kill onto Dazed. From this point onward it's pretty much all down to after plant positions, Existence gets a nice shot onto Hiko in apps and then sets up a crossfire with Scream on site. This forces Frost in an almost unwinnable scenario and of course Very Games come out on top. So we're going to break things down even further now and take a look at the round from the eyes of each individual player. Kenny S throws a smoke from spawn deep into middle stopping any CTs from facing. Like I said earlier, this gives both Existence and Smiths the freedom to set up into position without having to worry about being picked off. Since the smoke is thrown from spawn, you can actually rebuy and still have a full set of nades. Kenny then leads with the AWP to face Long Haul. The decision to let the AWP pick apps first is smart because Long Haul is a common spot CTs like to play when going aggressive. When the time comes to push out, he lets both the Riflers go first and drops down into pit. It's at this point in the round that the AWP becomes the most useful. Kenny just holds the angle from pit to arch, but unfortunately misses both his shots despite Frost actually re-peaking the same position. At any amateur level of play, they'll most likely try and face you on pit and you'll be able to pick up some easy kills. As soon as Scream smokes off mini pit to plant the bomb, Kenny S focuses his attention on quad and scatters both his flashes to stop anyone from pushing. This also helps Existence kill Dazed who drops down from balcony to peak with the flash. Existence's role in this round is to pretty much set everything up so that his teammates can get out of app safely. His smoke lands on truck, obstructing the view to balcony for anyone playing sight or mini pit. He then follows up with two flashes thrown over the roof which blinds anyone balcony, grave or pit. This is enough help to allow MBK to get the entry onto TCK and for Scream to follow up with the tray kill onto Semphis. If Smiths didn't get picked off at Boiler, Existence would have most likely stayed up in apps as it's such a strong position after plant. Instead he is forced to drop down and push back Dazed on Quad whilst the bomb is being planted. Note that Existence only drops down during the time frame of the smoke on Mini Pit as it covers him from the AWP of Frost. Once he gets the pick he sets up in a crossfire with Scream on site to win the round. MBK's role is to entry Fragger and leads the way out onto Balcony. When approaching apps, he waits for Scream to be in position for the boost and covers Boiler until Bedroom has been cleared. He then leads the way up Long Hall and runs out once the first flash from Existence has been thrown. Unfortunately he dies to Semphis but completed his job successfully with the entry onto TCK. As you can see, Scream trades instantly to take control of Pip. Smith spots Banana at the start of the round but then quickly sets up in Vietnam for a pot flash onto Middle. This blinds anyone arch or quad and pushes them back into more defensive positions. He then smokes up arch to allow Existence to throw the two flashes for Balcony. 
After they've taken pit control, Smith sets up in a decent position at Boiler to obtain map control of both quad and apps. Unfortunately though, he gets taken out by Frost who walks up on him with the AWP. Screen runs second mid with MBK and Kenny S, but instead of going through the app's entrance, he boosts onto Hay in Clear's bedroom. Once bedroom is clear, he follows MBK up long haul and makes sure he is second coming out onto balcony to pick up any tray calls. When he's in the pit, it's his job to wait a few moments for Kenny S to maybe get a pick and then smoke up mini pit to plant the bomb. The mini pit smoke is very important as it allows very games to move freely out of their positions. Scream can check the site and existence can move out onto quad. Had the smoke not been there, Frost would have most likely shut down the bomber, causing big problems for the very game side. After the plant, Scream just stays on site in a crossfire with existence. Frost gets blinded from Smith's pot flash trying to push up close middle. He then drops back straight to mini pit to face balcony, but can't see anyone due to the smoke. After his pick on Smith's in Boiler, he's still smoked out on Mini Pit and can't really do much until it's too late. TCK is responsible for holding Balcony. He does a good job on dodging his distance first flash, but catches the second one right in his face and falls down to MBK coming at apps. Semphis plays in Pit and just looks down at the ground to avoid both flashes. He manages to kill MBK but is instantly taken out by Scream on the Balcony. So as you can see, this strat is very methodical and well thought through. It's quite a fast push that is set in motion from the get-go. Normally teams play one site and one pit as a default setup for Inferno, so you shouldn't be coming up against too much resistance. Once you've taken pit control with the flashes, you literally just sit and wait for the CTs to peak and use the AWP to your advantage. It's a strategy Verogames have been using for a while and it works out really well. If you want to see more of this kind of content, then please show some support with a like, this one I actually recorded ages ago but I've only recently found the motivation to edit everything together properly. I decided to add a few new features and play around with the map overview a bit more. To see all the episodes from the strategy breakdown series you can of course check out the playlist. A lot of the strats are still relevant and can be put to use by any competent teams. As always thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.